Okay, welcome back. So today we'll try to have a look of some very interesting effects by using your camera, that is the webcam installed in your computer. So you make use of the camera and then to have different form of effect. So eventually we'll make use of this effect to, to treat your camera as a tracking device for locating movement or locating presence in front of your webcam. So before that, we will try to have a look of the additional parameter you can make use of in terms of the window size. So this is one of our original patch where you can use it to create an empty window with a rectangle in the center of the window. So the default size of the rectangle or the the window size is the rectangle will be one unit by one unit in terms of the jam dimension. And the jam window size, the default one is 500 pixel by 500 pixel. And as this particular exercise will make use of our camera and use the camera as a full screen image. So in this case, we will tailor make the window size to capture the 4x3 aspect ratio of the camera. The gem window is come with a number of properties where you can modify the orientation, the size and aspect ratio of the window. So in order to change the dimension, we have a dimension command where you can specify in terms of pixels, the width and the height of the window. So for this one, I specified a message with the name of the keyword dimension. This is a short form, D-I-M-E-N. And the two numbers, 800 and 600, will be the size of the window. Then we'll have a look at this one. So this is the original one without clicking the dimension. So after I click the dimension message, the window it creates will be a bigger one. So this is the size of 800 by 600. And the second step is I try to obtain the video image and put it as a texture on top of this particular rectangle. And in order to make this rectangle a full screen display of the video image, I need to change the size. So I use the first method by putting in two number boxes. And the two number box will denote the size, which is the width and the height of the rectangle, and we'll use this as the way to demonstrate what will be the size of this particular rectangle. And then we click drag the two number. And you can see that since the size of the gem window is a rectangle, 4x3, and the size of this particular rectangle is a square, 4x4 four four at this moment, and the dimension of the height, which is 4, which is a full green display in terms of the height of the rectangle. But for the width, we still have this kind of gap between the left and the right margin. So we need to change the width a little bit higher. So we can have 5. So you can see the still a little bit black area in the left and the right margin. So in this case, we shift click the first number. And in order to change the size a little bit, and if you observe the number and also the 
the size of the white rectangle. So it seems that when it comes to the size of 5.33, it will occupy the whole screen. So in that case, if you have a calculator and to calculate the aspect ratio between 5.33 and 4, it actually is 4 by 3 aspect ratio. So that is consistent with the dimension of the webcam image we are going to use. So once we settle the size of the rectangle, we can hard code it in the rectangle objects. And then we can add in the video image. So the Pix video object is actually the live camera image from the webcam attached to your computer. And then similar to Pix film or Pix image, you need to wrap the image as a texture and put it on top of the rectangle. So once we start the rendering, you can see the live image over here. Okay, so the second step is we would like to make use of the information from the live video image. So in the work path, what we have done is by displaying the video as some form of content. So starting from this particular exercise, we will try to analyze the information within the video and use it as a way, as something like an input controller in order to manipulate the other audio or visual elements in the patch display. The first things we come across or try to explain is a background command. In order to make sense of a video image, we usually need to compare two images. And for example, if you would like to detect whether there's someone appear in front of your camera, so the logic of detecting that particular present is first of all, you take a snapshot of the image without anyone appear in front of your camera. And then from time to time, you track whether there are any changes to that particular image. And this mechanism, which can be taken care of by a very simple command in the gem library. So this is the one we call the pix background. And if we take a look of the help of the pix background image. So usually it will come with the two operations. One is a reset operation, that is reset the background image. And the other is a threshold app operation, which will indicate how you would like to detect the change in the background. So we connect the video image to the pix background. So another term for the pix background is we call the background subtraction. So it means we would like to remove the background from the live image. And first of all, we would like to tell the computer what is the background image. And that particular background image is triggered by the use of this reset command or reset message. If you click on the reset message, a piece of the live video image will be stored in a separate storage area. And after that, for every frame you obtain from the video image, it will make a comparison with that particular image stored as a background. 
once it found or it's locate some sort of difference, it will display the difference as the image would will be mapped on top of the texture. So we can have a look of the effect. The second parameter we are going to do is a slider, which is a form of threshold controller. We will make use of this slider with the range of value from 0 to 1, which actually indicate the RGB value of the color image. And the second one is we try to duplicate this number as a list of free number. So in this case, I will make use of the grayscale. So that means all the free number I will try to duplicate the red, green, and blue as a um, luminant value in order to use it as a way to detect the change between the background and the live image. So we we'll have a look of the live effect. First of all, so this is the live image. So in order to perceive the change, I would like to disappear in front of the camera and then take a reset message. So after I take the reset message, in order to store the background image, I come back in front of the camera. And at this point, because I haven't changed anything in this particular slider, so I move the slider from the left position, which indicates 0, and then towards the right-hand side, which indicates a value of 1. And you start seeing some sort of pixelate image in the background. And if I move towards the right-hand side, you can see more of the background as a black image. And my own image in front of the camera will appear as a difference between the background image and the current live image from the webcam. So you can do a little bit of the adjustment of this particular slider. So of course we do not have a very good lighting condition such that you can have a very clear background removal effect, but you can still notice the operation. So by manipulating the slider, you can remove most of the background and reveal the image which is different from the original background image. So this particular patch will indicate how we can perform a simple background removal. And in the next one, we will make use of this particular event in order to locate the area which has the image on top of backgrounds, which indicates some sort of changes of present in front of the background image.